In this video we're going to talk about um, laying out the workspace using the Docking Manager. Um, it's very convenient to have the ability to move the windows about and give more priority or less priority or more exposure or less exposure to different windows based on what you're trying to do. And that's what the Docking Manager allows. So each of the windows that I see here uh, can have one of one of essentially three states. I can either be docked, such as the inventory window, I can be in a tab, or what, or one of many tab groups, such as the data entry panel, the 3D view, and the measurement view currently are, or I can be auto-hidden, such as the catalog currently is, and the auto-hide ones will show up as little tabs. When I hover over the tab, you see it pops out, and then when I go back to the view, it closes up again. So since the catalog isn't used all that much in this particular mode, uh, which is an analysis mode, I would want to have it auto-hidden. Um, to change uh, the state, there's a couple of different techniques. The first is to change from docked to auto-hidden. What I do is I move this little pin, which says auto-hide, to the auto-hide position, and now you'll see all of these guys uh, now flip over to the auto hide group. So I can pop out the catalog and it'll go back. I can pop out the schematic view and then it'll go back. Um, if I want to convert something back, what I do is I pop it out and I flip the pin back the other way and now it pins itself. Once it's pinned, I can adjust it by dragging the separator bar left and right. Now, if I decide that I wanted, for some reason, for example, to, to move this to a totally different location, like to the left, just press and hold your left mouse button, drag. I can float it out, in which case it just floats. And in fact, there's no reason I can't do that to all the windows. So if you happen to be a fan of sort of MDI style editing, I can just float everybody out into a window and I can adjust its size and I can flip back and forth between my windows like such. Um, now, one of the th interesting features that we have is the concept of named layouts or named views. And that's done with this combo box up here. If I go ahead and drop it down, I can say, you know, I want to go back to my default view and the system will flip back to the way it was. And now you notice as soon as I edited anything, like take this guy and drag it out, this thing went blank. And the reason is that this view here doesn't match any of my named views. So it's what it's saying is, hey, would you like to name this view something? And you do that by simply typing in here, my named view, and it'll say, hey, you want to add a named layout, named docking layout, named my named view? Yes, I would. And now it's available in the list. So if I go to my default view, there's my default view again, and, if, and you see my name view is not on the list, and I come back in. Now if I decide that I really don't want that, I just select the name view I want to get rid of, click the X, and it'll say, do you no longer wish to have the name view of my name view? I want to delete it, and now it's no longer available on the list. Um, to add something to the tab view, what you do is take it, drag it into the tab group you want to add it to, and you'll see there are uh, there's a little star wheel in the middle. You'll see a picture with three little tabs on it. You'll see left, right, top, and bottom. If I go to the v version with a tab and drop, you'll see now it added a tab, and now it's now a part of the tabbed group. I drag the tab off. I put it on the right. It docks. T it makes a new tabbed view on the right and I can flip things between tabbed views like so. Okay. If I want to put it back again, all I have to do is say, go over here, and I can put it back into my group, and I can convert it to a tab group. I can set its position, so I can make it above. I can make it below. I can set its size, I can set the whole group size, I can auto hide it again, I can auto hide everybody. Okay, so now if I want to get a little cleverer, what I can do is I can say, you know, I'd rather rather have him be down here like that, and he changes his behavior to now give me additional information. And again, I can auto hide, but now he auto hides down to the bottom. 
instead of over to the side. So I can have auto hides anywhere I want. And I can auto hide all the way around. I can also have auto hides on the left. And so now my entire surface is my 3D view and I only pop out the items when I want to in fact work with them. And if you ever get hopelessly screwed up, you just go back to your default view, like so. So it's really pretty easy to lay out the system exactly like you want it, and I would certainly encourage you to lay it out based on the working style that you find most convenient. And don't be afraid to have many different layouts, depending on what kind of tasks you're trying to perform. I personally have um, two. I have what I call my data entry view, where what I do is I have docked my depth panel down at the bottom, so that whenever I select any item I wish to edit, automatically it shows, or, I, or items actually, it automatically shows them up on the bottom so I can edit their values without having to go, go the rather cumbersome route of doing the pop-up edit box, which are, of course you're also free to use. Um, and you notice that in my edit view I also have pinned my catalog open so that I have available all of my various assemblies that I might want to use in building a pole. So if I want to take this cross arm and throw him on here, for example, I don't know why I'd want to do that, but let's say I did, you know, I, I have him available and he's ready to go. So that's the sort of general high-level overview of docking. Um, it's important to understand that nothing short of playing with it quite a bit will teach you everything it can do and I would encourage you to do so because you really can lay it out practically any way you'd want and um, it, set it up in a way that is most conducive to you doing your tasks and um, processing as many polls as easily as possible.